Guys, this is Lord Shale speaking on behalf of our show sponsor, Established Titles. Established Titles is a project based on a Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lords and ladies. They allow you to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so you can officially call yourself a lord or a lady. Established Titles is not just about your ego. You also get to do some good. In addition to your new fancy title, Established Title supports global charities like One Tree Planet and Trees for the Future to help with the afforestation effort. Your title pack gets you at least one square foot of dedicated land in a private estate in Scotland. Your certificate features a unique plot number where you can see the exact location of your land. And right now, Established Titles is holding 200 plots of land right next to mine. So come join me in the Bad Guy Inc. Kingdom. Getting this certificate even allows you to officially change your name to Lord or Lady. Put it on your credit card, put it on your plane tickets, or if you're so inclined, put it on your dating profile. Makes for a great last minute gift. And there's even couples packs that come with adjoining plots of land. Established Titles is having a great limited time sale. Go to establishedtitles.com slash chale to save 10% off today. Remember to use the promo code CHAIL or just click on the link below. Allow Professor CHAIL to take one more crack at you, okay? One more explanation of the timeline within this sport. You have a back and forth with an opponent. Okay, now if you don't start with that, it's no problem. No problem. You're going to be what I'm called the undercard. You have a back and forth with an opponent that catches on the organization, then some sends you something called a bout sheet. All right, now if I've already lost you, and that's already not you, no problem. Be ready to report to the arena at 2 o'clock and have your hands wrapped by 3. You're going on at 3.15, and I'm not insulting you for that. The undercard is not for bad fighters. It is not for unskilled fighters, man. Those guys are straight up awesome. It's for fighters that didn't follow this number one step. It's for fighters who contest, don't have a story behind it. Just so you understand. That's what the prelim category is going to be represented by. So you have a back and forth with a guy that works and catches on and you get a bout agreement. If you're here, okay, there's a way that you pick fights. That would be called picking a fight. Once you get the bout agreement, you have the fight. I no longer need to pick a fight. I now need to go into what's called promoting a fight. But when this whole thing is done, just so you can look at the timeline, when this whole thing is done, you have 48 hours to still continue on with that piece of business. It's unique to our sport. Just to take a football, by example, they get 24 hours. By the time it's done, they get a 24-hour news cycle. And then the news and the media will move on to what's next. Our sport, they give us a down day. They allow us to have Sunday as a travel day. So all the fighters can get back home get back to a connection and sell range and go back to work and you get through Monday. Now you really have two guys to think for that. Ariel Hawani puts on a massive show on Monday where he will talk about what happened over the weekend and Luke Thomas. Those are the two guys that made sure there was media on a Monday. So I don't make these rules. I'm just observing them for you. If you have passed Monday and you do anything to attempt to speak about what you did on the previous Saturday, nobody's going to hear it. You're not going to do well. But people within media will see that it didn't do well. They will put you into a category of not a top earner. They'll store that away, and in the future, they won't come to you for interviews. That went over almost all of your heads. When I talked about how well a piece does and the fact that there's analytics for that that will determine if you ever get to come back on that platform. I've, I've lost all but three or four of you. Let's make a deal. No more making a statement after the fight. Making a statement after the fight rolled around about 12 months ago. And whatever it is you do that you go put out on Instagram or that you put out on Facebook, the MMA dirt sheets, grab it. Now you just give them a free piece. They didn't have to call, they didn't have to do anything. You just gave them a piece that they can copy and paste and they will headline it. 
the leech makes statement after fight. If you lost, we don't want to hear from you. That's very cold. Oh, that's cold. It's the truth. If you lost and in your statement, you're going to talk about that loss. We don't need to hear from you. And there's a difference. Both are very strong. Want and need. Very strong, but very different. And if you lost and you come out and you talk about the loss within your state, that's what the whole statement is about. You've now satisfied both. We don't want it and we don't need it. We got to stop doing it. You're not serving yourself. That's not a thing people need to hear. They do not need to be thanked, just so you understand. People that really need to be thanked are your coaches who are there. The fans that came out to support you as you make believe, you have no idea if they did or not. Even the ones that were on their feet and clapping for you as your name was announced. There was 22 other guys in the card. And for you to arrogantly assume that those fans that were clapping were there for you, first off, it's just weird. Second off, it's unneeded. And third off, you're bringing them to your level. You're either the star of the show or you're not. Are you just one of the boys? Are you just one of the many? Because the fans don't want you there. They want to look up to you. There's a reason they rise that octagon as a put to put it down in a pit. There's a reason if you ever go to a court of law, the judge sits up so that you look up to him. There's a reason the presidents of nations don't do it level with the audience and they damn sure don't go down in a pit so they're looking up to you. Now, I don't want to overthink this thing. I just want to stop with the post-fight statement. And I'm not sure that you're meaning to make one. But if you are doing it in the form of social media, you are making it very clear, right? If there's any dirt sheet that links to that, says where they got it, and it's from social media, and copy and paste, and does a piece on you. If there's anyone that does it, which we don't need and we don't want, but if they do that, they've also told the smarter guys in the room that your stock has dropped so low, you couldn't get somebody on the phone. If you're down in the dumps and you're dying, you just got to talk about something. You would have seven, eight, nine, ten requests. You're going to take your choice of one of them and you're going to get your message out. When you go to Instagram, when you go to Facebook, when you go to Twitter, when you go to your own piece of social media, you're telling the world, nobody's called me. Nobody's reached out. So as down in the dumps as I perceived that you are, you've now put yourself even lower. And if you're coming out and you're talking about the fight, by the way, and you're being sportsmanlike, you took the high road, it's fair and square. You don't question anything. You don't question your opponent. You don't question the tactics. You don't question the officiating. You don't question the judges. You don't question anything. You just want to give a whole bunch of thanks. You've given me nothing that I can go with. If you cried foul ball, which, by the way, would be disgusting, would be poor sportsmanship. Again, I go back to the category of just keep it to yourself. But if you did, you've now given me something that I can work with. I might give you a hard time for it. I might tease you and pick on you for it. I can still cover it. This make a statement after a loss isn't a thing. Keep it to your damn self. Those Instagram and Twitter fans. They aren't really your people. They expect something from you. They expect you to recover. They expect you to get another fight. They expect you to get in the gym and buckle down. And they expect you to come back. That's the expectation. And you owe them that. You owe those social media followers for sure. But you also owe them to know what they want and give it to them. It's showbiz 101. What does the audience want? Great, that's what I'm going to give them. I don't care what the audience thinks. Okay, great, you're going to be out of business. I know what the audience thinks, but I'm going to give them something else. Okay, great, you're going to be out of business. Stop with the post fight. I saw the leech do it. Now, the leech might be in higher demand than he's ever been, truly. Leech is a tough guy. He's also a willing guy. He showed us that when he took on Shemai. We like that. We respect that here, right? He showed us that when he took, and there's six guys in total that get credit, but he's one of them. 
who took a fight that he didn't plan to have, allowed a flip-flop because it was best for business, and he went on with it. The leech really did do a very good job. And a lot of people want to see the leech, and a lot of people believe that the leech was a victim of a bad judgment. I'll share with you in full disclosure, I thought Daniel won. It was close. And I thought it was the stand-up portion that he won. And I thought that largely because it was a great jab he was throwing out. I'll hear from you. And I know many people have a different opinion. I thought Daniel won. But when those people have the opinion and when it's going to be talked about by the highest of levels and the headlines are still out there, as soon as you speak up, you will now stop that. That will be viewed at, from the viewer as closure. As though it's done as though it's over. We wanted this guy to know and we wanted to support this guy. Now you got the other thing where Daniel is coming out and saying, well, then I want to rematch him if all of these people are talking. Daniel, th there's not a lot of people talking. There's probably five people that are talking. It was not a sought after fight. It wasn't a wonderful night. It wasn't recognized with fight of the night. We're all ready to move on. The fact that Daniel is willing to redo the match because somebody else wants him to, that's a problem for me. Daniel needs to be doing whatever is best for his career. And the golden rule is he with the gold rules. If they handed you a world championship at the end of the night and the whole crowd's booed and the judges couldn't agree, hold it over your head, remind the people of the golden rule, walk out and do what you want. And I respect Daniel for doing it because I, I know why he did it. And I know the braver and courage and he's saying, well, then get it in there. If, if it should have been his fight, then by God, let him have it. Give him three more rounds to prove that it should be his and I'll live with the result. I do like what Daniel did. But I don't want Daniel to be influenced, and I don't want the leech to fall into a category that guys have been doing for the last 12 months, and they need to stop right now. If you lost the fight, no post-fight speech, no post-fight statement. If you just can't do it, oh, God, I can't do it. I just, I have to send this out. I just, I have to do it. You still have a window. You have Sunday, and you have Monday. As soon as those days are exhausted, we have moved on. Now, there's no doubt of why you do it. You do it because you're thirsty. You do it because you had all of this attention. Now you came to this closure and it gets stuck in wipe. Post-fight depression is very real. Guys, I really do understand that. But if that's you and you just have to do it, man, you got to see some likes. You got to see some retweets. You got to see something with your name in it because that's what you got used to for the last three months as you were preparing for this. No problem. No problem. Do it Sunday or do it Monday. If your story is worth a damn, We'll all pick up on it and we'll cover it for you. But if you do it on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, it now doesn't matter. No matter what it is that you came out, it now doesn't matter. Because we have another event and it's only appropriate that we start giving shine to those guys. Post-fight statement by the loser. Fight like hell. It's hard. Resist. Stop doing it.